I was one of the survivors. I'm probably the only talking survivor you'll ever hear. Two other survivors are under close guard somewhere in these United States. One is not in very good shape. He's been living in uh, Canada. So I'm about the only one around that knows the firefight, that knows all the detailed files of the entire operation. 66 Secret Service agents, FBI and the like, Black Berets died in that firefight. I was there. Number one, part of what I'm going to tell you is going to be very shocking. Part of what I'm going to tell you is probably going to be very unbelievable. So, if instead of putting on your glasses, I'll ask you to put your skepticals on rather than your spectacles. But please feel free to do your own homework. I know the Freedom of Information Act isn't much to go on, but unfortunately it's basically the best we've got. Uh, your local law library and your nearest law university is a good place to look for congressional records. So if one continues to do their homework, uh, and one can be standing vigilant in regards to their country. I love the country that I'm living in more than I love my life. I would not be standing before you right now risking my life by telling you these things if I didn't believe it so. The first part of this talk is going to concern deep underground military bases and the black budget. Let me first start by emphasizing the black budget. The black budget is a secretive group, basically a secret budget. It garners one quarter of the gross national product, the entire gross national product of these United States. At present, the gross national product is around five trillion dollars. So one quarter of that's about one one and a quarter trillion dollars per year. Uh, at least 1.023 trillion, and I say at least, is used in black budget programs like deep underground military bases. <coughs> Presently, there are 129 deep underground military bases in these United States. Is this our? No, this one doesn't work. Anyway, of these 129 bases, they've been building them day and night unceasingly for since the early 40s. Some of them were built even earlier than that. Uh, these bases composed, comprise bases. These bases comprise basically of large cities underground. They're connected by high-speed monorail magnetoleviton trains that can go up to Mach 2. Uh, books have been uh, several books recently have been written about this activity, all of which is verifiable through bibliography. Uh, I think Al Bielik will, uh, uh, unfortunately, Al Bielik has my only copy. Uh, of, uh, is Al Bielik here, by the way? Al Bailey? Yes, please do. Richard Souter's book, he's a PhD architect, and he's written, he alone also is uh, risking his life by talking about this. He worked uh, with a number of government agencies on deep underground military bases. Okay, there are 129 of these in these United States. In around where you live, in Idaho, there are 11 of them. It's a very large number. The average depth of each base is roughly a mile deep. They are basic whole cities hollowed out underground. They are somewhere between two and two thirds cubic miles and four, cu four and a quarter cubic miles hollowed out underground. You might ask how this is done. Well, right now they have laser drilling machines that can drill a tunnel seven miles in one day. Obviously, we the public can I have been in this and we're not told about this. So unfortunately, I don't believe these things. Uh, the black 
projects as we know them sidestep Congress, which is illegal. Uh, right now, the New World Order is depending upon these bases. And if I'd known there was the New World Order involved, I wouldn't have had anything to do with them. And I, I would lie to rather extensively. So. Um, basically, they, the technology as we know it for every calendar year that goes by, every 12 month calendar year, the military technology increases about 44 and a half years. This is why it's easy to understand that back in 1943 they were able to create a, through vacuum tube technology, uh, a ship that literally disappeared from one place and reappeared 400 miles later in another place. Uh, my father, Otto Oscar Schneider, there's an interesting story about him. Um, he fought on both sides of the war. He was originally a U-boat captain. He was captured. Came up, he was captured by the French. He was turned over to the United States Army. He was turned over to the United States Navy. He was repatriated here to Cocoa Beach, Florida, and Fort Lauderdale, and uh, taken up to uh, uh, Philadelphia Navy Yard thereafter. And he was a master machinist as well as uh, an Navy doctor. He later became an Navy doctor. He never did anything with it. But basically, he was involved with uh, uh, different kinds of concerns, um, such as uh, A bomb and H bomb and, and uh, Philadelphia experiment uh, and these other kinds of projects. Uh, his groundwork, he, he invented a camera, a high speed camera, that took pictures of the first atomic tests in Bikini Island on the 12th of July, 1946, to which I have original photographs of, which show unidentified flying objects fleeing the bomb site at a high rate of speed. Bikini Island at the time was infested with the things in, in various depths of its waters. The natives always saw them. The natives had problems with their cattle, or basically pigs is what they raised, and other things, although this story has never come out. Uh, this is basically what happened. So uh, at that time, through General MacArthur and others, they felt that, uh, in fact, General MacArthur was coined in saying the term, the very next world war we have will be the war of, uh, not with uh, people from planet Earth, but from, pe uh, from aliens or people from other planets. And uh, this man was, uh, if we hadn't had him during World War II, we wouldn't be here today. Anyway, my father had laid the groundwork with theoreticians about Philadelphia experiment and other experiments. What does that have to do with me? Other than the fact of that, uh, all I can say is that uh, if it wasn't for... He never told his kids this, and he kind of kept it secret until a couple of weeks before he died. Um, I kind of regretfully say that. Um, I don't agree with what he did on the other side of the pond in Nazi Germany, but I'll tell you one thing. I think he had a lot of guts in coming here and doing what he did. He was hated in his own land. In fact, there was a, there was a million dollar in gold reward for anybody who could kill him. Just bring the picture back of the dead, the dead person, and it never happened. Anyway, back to uh, topic number one. Is dumb bases or deep underground military bases. We've been basically lied to, folks. Uh, we've been lied to a long time. Number one, the alien question. Uh, nobody really knows the truth. We've been ruined by Madison Avenue. has painted, painted a very unrealistic picture of what's going on with outer space aliens and, and, and the insider government, especially at Groom Lake. This particular facility, the hat shows uh, this wasn't the original insignia, this is kind of like a, a local uh, uh, fish wrapper type insignia. And the original insignia had a skunk on it, because it was part of the infamous skunk words. So, uh, anyway, this particular base originally is housed up to 117 
live alien um, critters or whatever you want to call them. Um, right now, it's not housing much of anything. Most of the stealth hardware has been has been removed. They moved it over to Kirtland Air Force Base. First of all, I want to tell you about aliens and the alien agenda. Back in 1954, under the Eisenhower administration, the federal government decided to circumvent the Constitution of the United States and form a treaty outside of the borders of the United States, within the borders of the United States, well, basically uh, a treaty from entities outside of the borders of the United States, and it was supposed to be secret. It was called the GREATA 1954 Treaty, treaty G-R-E-A-T-A, GREATA, GREATA 1954 Treaty. That basically said that the aliens could take a few cows and, and, and test their, uh, test their uh, uh, implanting techniques on a few human beings, but they had to give detailed lists of the people involved, et cetera, et cetera. Slowly but surely, the outer space aliens slowly uh, altered the bargain until they decided they wouldn't go by it at all. And back in 1979, this was a reality. The firefight occurred. And that it is time that world governments officially acknowledge. I was involved in we were building an addition to the deep underground military base at Del Sey, New Mexico, which, by the way, is a, probably the United States' deepest base. It goes down seven levels over two and a half miles deep. And, but at that particular time, we had drilled four distinct holes in the desert ground, and we were going to link them together with shape charge explosives. And then we were going to basically blow out large sections at a time. Well, when, uh, when I was a, uh, my job at that time was to go down in these holes, gather rock samples, uh, check them for their particularity or particle count, um, give a detailed account of uh, what kind of chemical explosive or plastic explosive to use when we go from there. Um, as I was headed down there, uh, to my total surprise, uh, we found ourselves amidst a, a large cavern uh, that was already uh, full of uh, outer space aliens, otherwise known as large graves. I was petrified, as most people might be. Uh, the only thing I could think of doing at the time was shooting at them. I killed two of them, but by the time I could reload, uh, and refire at that time on a Walter PPK pistol. I was an engineer, so I didn't feel I had to carry a gun underground. And I always carried this particular one. It's nice and small and it's quite effective. But uh, anyway, I emptied, uh, killed a couple of these things. And uh, at that time, there was several other groups of people down there. It's about 30 people in total and 30 uh, to almost 40 or more came down there and they all got killed. Um, basically what had occurred was that we surprised a whole inter, under, under mountain base of existing aliens and later I was to find out that we are not the highest on the food chain. These aliens have probably been living on our planet for the better different groups of aliens anyway, the short and the tall grays at least for a million years, living here. And uh, uh, this could explain a lot of the theory behind the ancient theory of uh, ancient astronauts and these other kinds of things like that. Might also explain the bloodthirstiness of different kinds of native populaces like the Aztecs, etc., etc., Old Max and whatnot. Anyway, I got shot basically here and uh, 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 their kind of weapon wasn't really a gun-like thing. It was kind of like a box that they had on their body that they could manipulate. And uh, it burned a hole in me and it split my ribs apart and kind of gory and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, it uh, also gave me a high dose of uh, rather nasty cobalt radiation. And uh, I later I have cancer to this day. It's probably a result of it, although I can't prove that. Okay, the second part of my talk is topic number two. Uh, it includes uh, basically 
how this all occurred. How could we have possibly gotten involved? Well, we finished from working with, uh, we basically were beaten down by World War II, and uh, I guess uh, uh, we were figured to be rather vulnerable as a populace in the world, which we were at the time. And uh, I'm sure this is probably why we, at our weakest point, uh, later found out to uh, to uh, uh, be vulnerable indeed. And so we were basically attacked. And of course, I think some of us. How many people here are familiar with the crash at Aztec, New Mexico? Raise your hand. In 1947, sometime in July of 1947, there was a large crash of a flying saucer. Uh, I believe it had uh, seven or eight alien uh, critters, or whatever you want to call them, aliens in them. One survived, and I believe uh, six or seven were. Uh, I don't know the whole story about the whole thing. And one of the artifacts I have here on the table is uh, when, I was ch when I was a young child, I was uh, about 14 time. Um, I had a friend of my father, was uh, Sir Johnny Rollins, uh, he was, uh, had a British naval intelligence. And uh, he gave me, I asked him if I could have a piece of metal of this crashed disc, and my father protested violently. And I, but anyway, you know, Johnny Rollins said, sure, I can give you a little piece. And, you know, was, uh, he gave me a little piece of Adam in my collection ever since. That was kind of like the small start of a collection. But uh, other than that, uh, the UFOs really wasn't my bag until uh, I started work at Area 51, uh, which is in the Nellis Air Force Base uh, north of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, during in uh, going back in 1979 in a firefight, it took me about two and a half years to recuperate, enough that I could go back to work. But I did. I survived and I went back to work. Through Morrison Canoes and EG and and back to all the page and page and other construction outfits at the time. <coughs> anyway, uh, at Area 51, they were testing all kinds of very peculiar spacecraft. I think you're also, how many people here, for instance, are familiar with Bob Lazar's story? Good. That's, that's a good, good group indeed. I, I suggest you, more of you uh, uh, buy his, or obtain his tape or borrow his tape and uh, read some of the publications. He was a physicist who worked at Los Alamos National Laboratory. Uh, at Area 51, trying to decipher the, what was the propulsion factor of, of basically these alien spacecraft, these disks and other kinds of type of, type of, of craft. So, but there's another thing I want to talk to you about other than all this stuff about deep underground military basing that might be effective. Um, we're all basically here as as kind of like a captive audience, and except, except that we're all worried about the strange activity of our federal government. I'm very worried about it. Uh, they've stonewalled senators. They've lied to the public. They refuse to tell the truth in regards to the alien matters. Um, uh, I, I can go on and on. That, uh, the list is, uh, it would take longer than there are days here, <laughs> let alone minutes. So I can tell you that, uh, uh, for in all respects, I'm rather disgruntled that uh, since I used to be a rather high-ranking worker in our federal government structure, uh, I'm very disappointed in the activities of our federal government, very worried. For instance, i to run by several topics to you. Uh, recently, I happen to know somebody who lives in or out. I live just south of Portland, Oregon. Uh, somebody that works at Gunderson. Uh, steel fabrication, and what they do is they make railroad cars. And uh, a fellow I know, I've known for the better part of 30 years, uh, he works there, he's a, kind of a lead welder and engineer. He's kind of a quiet type, and he, he, he came in excited to me. He called me up, and I met him, and I tried to calm him down quite a bit. But he told me, he says, well, they're building prisoner cars. They're going to 
looks like the federal looks like everything you've been talking about the federal government is, is starting to happen and he was real nervous about it and I said, going to slow down Bob. So anyway, he told me what was happening. He mentioned that Gunderson has got a contract with the federal government to build 107,200 full length rail cars, each with 143 pairs of shackles in each road in each car. And there are 11 subcontractors in this giant project, and supposedly Gunnarsson got over $2 billion for the contract. Um, Bethlehem Steel, uh, there's different steel outfits, there's different fabrication outfits across the country are building them. Anyway, I says, hey, this is a nice, fantastic story, but uh, how does it pertain? And he says, well, i got to show you one of these cars. So we did. We went to the rail yards in North Portland. I call it Graffitiville, USA, because it's wall wall graffiti. And uh, there's a new car. And he popped open the seal and slid the door back, and mm -hmm. there they were. Why well, he wasn't wrong. And it's scary. Now, if you multiply 102,000, excuse 107,200, times 143 times 11, we'll come up with a monster figure of about 15 million. 15 million is about the number of interested people that I would consider patriots of these United States and other interested people that don't like seeing what's going on with our federal government that want to do some serious changing but can't do it. See, no more can we vote out our elected officials. They become kings and queens over us. And I hate to say this, folks, but our present structure of government is not democracy at all. It's technocracy. And, it, and it's a form of feudalism. It has nothing to do with the republic, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. These people are godless. They've voted out, they've legislated out um, prayer in public schools. First of all, the public school system is a disgrace, but here they voted out prayer. It used to be before you started class in grade school, you'd have a little prayer. That's kind of a neat thing. Well, now you can't do that. It's against the law. If you do that, by the way, you can get fined up to $100,000 and you get two and a half years in prison. Now, somewhere down the line, I don't believe this is very prudent. I believe that we we deserve better. We can do better. I also believe that that our federal government now is running the gamut of enslaving pe good, freedom-loving people of these United States. I'm, I love these United States more in my life. That's why I'm talking about this to many people as I can find. I'm not a very good speaker, but I can tell you I'll keep shooting my mouth off until I can until somebody puts a bullet in me because I'll tell you, it's worth it to talk to a group like this or any other group about the atrocities of our federal government structure. Now, that's only one problem. There are other problems. How about the deep underground military bases I've been talking about? I'm going to show you a number of, uh, of uh, things that I've collected here as a kind of statistics, and just bear with me here. I'll drop the mic here. We have stealth black jet. And here are the different code names for them. There's 29 prototypes, different prototypes, presently. Cost for biennium is roughly somewhere around 1.6 trillion. I did this in, with this compilation in 1993. Budget, budget from U.S. Congress five-year plan that we're told about is 247.6 million. You couldn't buy the spare parts of of all the black helicopters and the and the F-117As and the B-1, the B-2 bomber, and and all the other 20, 24, 25 prototypes. Couldn't even get the nuts and bolts for that. So we've been lied to, folks, and I know we can do better. Black budget garners. This figure, roughly one and a third trillion dollars every two years. Trillion. I'm not talking billion, folks. Trillion. If you don't know what a trillion is, it's a thousand billion. It's a big number. If you were to regard that in dollar bills, it would be 11 tons of dollar bills. That's how big a trillion is. Okay. The black budget literally means hidden budget. 
The U.S. Congress never sees the books of this clandestine pot of gold. Contractors of stealth, and I've listed quite a few here, eg and Westinghouse, McDonnell Douglas, Morris and Knudsen, Wack and Hood Security Systems, Boeing Aerospace, Lorimar Aerospace, Aerospecial of France, Mitsubishi of Japan, also Mitsubishi Heavy Electric Industries, Ryder Trucks, Bechtel, IG Farben, that's a chemical company, plus a host of hundreds more. Is this what we're supposed to be living up to as freedom-loving people of these United States? I don't believe so. Still, 68% of the U.S. military budget is directly or indirectly affected by the black budget. Star Wars, uh, otherwise nicknamed Star Wars, Strategic Defense Initiative, relies heavily upon stealth weaponry. By the way, none of this would have been available without us taking apart with a fine-tooth comb crashed flying saucers that either we downed or they crashed themselves into our deserts. None. All these materials on the table, some of which are formed by our space, the space shuttle, by the way, you might ask, what's it shuttling? Well, it's and that it is time that world governments officially acknowledge ingots of, uh, of metal that are used that are specially milled down. First of all, they're, they're milled in, in the confines of outer space. Most of these metals cannot be produced on the planet. They, have, they need a near vacuum of outer space for their production. That's what we're shuttling. We're not even, you know, folks, we're not even getting, we're not even getting any semblance of what I'd call pablum. We're not being told anything close to the truth. I believe our government officials have sold us down the drain, lock, stock, and barrel. And by the way, up until several weeks ago, I was employed in the United States government with a Warialite 38 clearance factor. One of the highest in the world. Excuse me. Questions later. Microphone. We can't hear you. Can? Can't hear me? Yeah. Well, anyway, this microphone is. I'm a tall person. This microphone doesn't get up any further, and it's kind of hurting me. Anyway, another thing about strategic defense initiative. I believe it's there to prevent alien attack upon planet Earth. It has nothing to do with the Cold War. As we have seen, the Cold War was a total farce. And it was only a toy, an implement toy, to garner billions and trillions of dollars from good-loving, tax-paying citizens like I am and you are. Uh, for what? I don't mind a, a defense initiative against uh, attack from, uh, if it be from a real threat, but I sure hate to be lied to about there being this kind of communism and that kind of communism, and when we all find out the whole thing has been planned lock, stock, and barrel for the last 75 years by an intergovernmental group, I guess uh, then we kind of know which side the bread is buttered on. Anyway, here's another piece of information for you folks. The DEA, ATF, Drug Enforcement Agency, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, these agencies rely upon stealth tactical weaponry for as much as 40% of its operations and budget. And this is, remember this is in 1993. The figures have gone up considerably since. The United Nations used American stealth aircraft for over 28% of its collective worldwide operations from 1990 to 1992, and that's taken for the Center for Strategic Studies and the United Nations Report 392. Yeah, I would appreciate that because I'm having to bend over here. And really hurts. Thank you very much. The guardians of stealth. There are over three cl distinct classifications of special police used to guard one of our most well-kept secrets. Number one, this is the most disturbing of all. 
It's MJTF, and that, by the way, that stands for Military Joint Tactical Force, otherwise known as the Black Berets. Some people call them the Delta Force, and there are other names for it. It's a multinational tactical air, excuse me, a multinational tactical force primarily used to guard the various stealth aircraft worldwide. And by the way, see the picture over here on the table, you might come all over there and look at it. Uh, yeah, after the talk, you might do that or during the break. Uh, you'll find out a nice picture of it there. There was 172 of them built. Ten of them crashed or were crippled. Um, something went wrong with them. So there's uh, roughly 162 or three. I can't remember at last count. We gave them away. We, I say we, the federal government gave them away, Bill Clinton signed them away uh, about six weeks ago, the United Nations. Is this what we are paying our hard-earned tax money to do, folks? No, I don't believe so, and I know we can do better. And I actually believe I'm not advocating the overthrow of any government. I don't believe in such for the, for the main reason. The number one, it always kills the wrong folks. But I believe if I have the chance to tell people about these atrocities. I think that there will be some serious letter writing, if not letter writing, some serious uh, conscientious voting done in the very near future on various elected government officials, if not the whole category of elected government officials. Case in point I might want to mention is uh, our local, please ask the questions later if you know one. Uh, our local government officials have also kind of labeled us a bunch of rubes and morons, and I think, I think we can expect a lot better than that. Starting off with the World Trade Center bombing. I was hired not too long ago to do a report. First of all, I know about the 90-some-odd varieties of chemical explosives. First of all, I looked at the pictures that were actually taken right after the blast and the concrete was puddled and melted. The steel and the rebar inside the cement was literally extruded up to six feet longer than its length. And there's only one weapon that can do that, and that's a nuclear weapon. And that's a construction nuclear weapon. So obviously the, the people that they're looking for that they say it was a nitrate explosive that did the damage, they're, they're lying 100% folks. The people they have in custody probably didn't do the crime. As a matter of fact, I have reason to believe that that very same group did do other crimes. They killed, I believe, a Jewish rabbi in New York, and maybe this was some kind of scapegoat problem, but I'm not sure about that. However, I want to further mention that with the last explosion in Oklahoma City, they also say Basically, it was a, nit a nitrated or, or fertilizer bomb that did it a whole truck full. First, they came out with the information, said it was 1,000 pounds, then it was 1,500, then it was 2,000, then it was 3,000, then it was 4,000, now it's 20,000. Well, by the way, you can't put 20,000 pounds in the rider truck, can you? Now, I've never mixed explosives per se. I know the chemical structure and the application of construction value explosives. I earned a reputation on it. I helped hollow out over 13 deep underground military bases in the United States. I worked on the Malta project. I worked on West Germany on its uh, military bases and Spain on its and Italy on its. I can tell you from very sure experience, a nitrate explosive wouldn't have hardly shattered the windows of that building. It would maybe have knocked the facing off. It would have killed a few people, uh, maybe at the most 20 to 30 people tops, but it would never have done that kind of damage. I believe I've been lied to as, as a member in good standing of these United States, and I'm not taking it any longer. So I'm telling you that you've been lied to. How many people are in this room? You've all been lied to, lock, stock, and barrel. And I do believe 
if we all get up and say, we've had enough, we want the truth, and if we're not going to get the truth, we want you to step down. If you won't step down, then I do believe our founding fathers told us and warned us that a federal government structure out of control is totalitarian slavery, and I do believe that we have to do something about it. Now, that's pretty serious, hard, down-to-earth talk. But I don't see any way we're going to get around it. I don't perceive at the present time that we have more than six months of country life left in these beautiful United States. The present rate. Right now, the so-called Patriot Movement, which has been given a stinging blow by Janet Reno, who, by the way, I want to tell you something about Janet Reno. Janet Reno cheated her way through law school like Bill Clinton did. It's provable. It's on the public record. Janet Reno is a confirmed lesbian. I don't believe, I believe there are a lot of wonderful women that would make a great Attorney General of these United States. They're far more educated, they're far more moral than she is. I would I would hate to think how we are being hoodwinked by such evil people. We are the laughing stock of the world and I do believe I can qualify myself by saying I'm a tired American and I'm now speaking out. I think we can do better. I think these people of these United States mostly older people above the age of 45 are now seriously worried about their own future. And I'm going to give you a run by some scenarios here that are scary indeed. The United Nations is a world dictatorship body, period, plain and simple. It is housed in the United States. By the way, some years ago there was an interesting thing that happened. The United Nations sent the Uncle Sam, in quote Uncle Sam, a bill for $8 billion. So the Uncle Sam, the federal government, sent the United Nations a bill for $200 billion. They haven't paid one nickel of rent on prime real estate in New York City. They have special trains that shovel all these diplomats around. One of my best friend's wives and her two little boys was killed by a drunken diplomat from Kuwait. Who, by the way, nothing... Our law, by the way, has no effect. I'll tell you another thing. Military law on military reservations has no effect. Public law on military reservations has no effect. Uh, once again, our, our wonderful, beautiful, thin sheet of paper called the United States Constitution and another nice thin sheet of paper called our Bill of Rights has been trampled on beyond repair. We have to stand up and say, this is enough, and you're, you as elected officials are going to obey the Constitution of these United States. Number one, by first limiting the amount of your service to our federal government. Like one term. One ping only, as the Navy would say, one ping only. By the way, one term is plenty. Because if you're an evil person, one term you can do a lot of harm. If you're a good person, you can do a lot of good. Two ways of looking at it. Our elected government officials have sidestepped our, the whole thing and says, well, uh, was so-called contract of America. Let me run this scenario by you folks. Contract of America is the exact terminology that Adolf Hitler used to subvert his people in 1931. I believe we're not of that same caliber. I believe we can do better. Another thing, the contract with America is a last-ditch effort by our federal government structure to tear away the Constitution of these United States and the Declaration and the Bill of Rights. A Declaration and a Bill of Rights. 
render. Reading these wonderful pieces of paper that were somehow have protected us from economic and other forms of slavery, I doubt if there's more than 50 people in this room, including me, I hate to say, has not seriously read the U.S. Constitution. That's a national disgrace. I'm beginning. I picked up a book out of a out of a library and I photocopied it. I'm reading it extensively. Our founding fathers separated church and state. It did not legislate any form of judgeship or judge body to say that we cannot pray either in a school, on federal government property. And by the way, you cannot pray on federal government property. If you do so, you're in violation of federal government standards and laws. And you can be guilty of a $100,000 fine and 20 years in prison. I do believe the people that are now in charge are atheists. And if they are not atheists, what are they? I think we can do better. Another thing I want to blow by your ears is the fact that a lot of you have probably seen in different areas black helicopters. There's over 64,000 black helicopters in these United States. For every hour that goes by, there's one being built. And that it is time that world governments officially acknowledge money? I don't believe so. What in the heck does the federal government need 64,000 tactical helicopters for if they are not trying to enslave us? I doubt if the entire military government structure needs 64,000 worldwide. Supposedly over 230 countries. I doubt if all the world needs that many helicopters. <coughs> Stealth aircraft, for instance. The F-117A, there's 157 of the son of a guns going around. You know their sole purpose is? They're all loaded with LIDAR, L-I-D-A-R, and SEER, Computer Enhanced Imaging Radar. They can fly over your house. They can see you walking from room to room. They can tell if you've got an old antique rifle on your mantelpiece. They can see objects in the house with a variation, not with a variation limit and capability of one inch to 30,000 miles. That's how accurate this is. Is this a proper use of our tax money? I would say not. Now, I worked in the federal government for a long time. I know exactly how these people handled their business. Every time I did a job, worked in a federal government installation. I was given a battery of 17 psychological and eight other forms of tests. First of all, we're supposed to be the militia, but somehow up jumps the Brady Bill and other evil bills like it. I don't agree crazy people should be shooting firearms, but on the other hand, I do believe in vigilance. And vigilance is guided by a good spirit who knows the difference between right and wrong, who loves God, who loves talking to God, regardless of what religion we are. And by the way, there's a lot probably in this room, there's at least a dozen different kinds of religions. I might be wrong. But I'll tell you, they're all good. God doesn't respect what religion you belong to, contrary to what you may have been told. I can tell you, though, that if we are to allow the atheist federal government structure to enslave us, we won't have this opportunity any longer. We have to do something about it. How are we going to do something about it? Well. Some of us are attorneys in this room, perhaps, maybe one or two of us. Maybe somebody works for an attorney. Maybe somebody knows somebody who is a good attorney. And I know that seems like a hard number to come up with, but there's, there are a few of them out there. Maybe somebody knows a senator or a congressman or has had help by such. 
There's one outstanding in Oregon. His name is Mark Hatfield. That man helped me fight the federal government. See, my father left me these pictures of what he took at Bikini Island. Operation Crossroads. And I'm going to have this one out on the table. It's the original. I'll ask you please carefully handle it and try not to put too many fingerprints on it. Right over here, right over here, and I'll point to it, and I'll point to it. <laughs> hey, Echo, is a structure, is an unidentified flying object. This was taken 12th of July, 1946. The federal government at that time knew all about flying saucers, what they were and what their agenda was, and how they want to control us by world domination. Without question, they knew about it. Let's get on. Al Bailick is our second speaker. He worked in a very secretive government operation called the Philadelphia Experiment. Well, so did my father, by the way, and I didn't know this until on his deathbed. And I now have the picture proof of it. Also, I have a picture of a supposed non-human alien called Val Thor that worked for the Pentagon. He still works for the Pentagon. In 58 years, he has not changed. He still looks young. Something's wrong. Uh, I don't know if he's doing it under caress or what, but evidently he's still there. Don't know what kind of alien he is. But he's about a few inches shy of eight feet tall. He's very bright. He's worked in the Department of Defense in the Pentagon for, I believe, 58 or 56 years, one of the two figures. So don't tell me, folks, don't tell me, federal government, that this isn't so. That when we see something in the, in the night sky that doesn't add up to an aircraft, that it's a weather balloon, or that we're mistaken, or I'm crazy, or we're crazy. Because it's not. You've been lied to, you've been cheated, You've been stolen from, you've been cheated by your public officials, and I think it's time that we not only realize this, but it's time that other people form cells and start talking about this vigorously. If, say, only five people in this room are doing what I'm doing, I can't imagine, just five people have one talk in one year to a group of people like this. In six short months, we could reach 10 million people. That's a formidable number. But if I'm just the only one out there talking, it's never going to do it. Right now, before the U.S. Senate, is an anti-terrorist bill. This anti-terrorist bill, by the way, is going to kill the United States Constitution and Bill of Rights by number one. Number one, it will take away, first of all, it will arm the federal government police force. First of all, I think the federal government's got enough police. There's 1,719,000 federal police officers in these United States. That is more that was in, that was in either Germany in, during World War II or Russia under Stalin and Beria. Now, at the present moment in time, seven weeks ago, in Nellis Air Force Base, and a year and about a month ago, about 13 months ago, because I was there at that time, we entertained the United Nations and the Russians and showed them Area 51, which is supposed to be our most secret military base. What is going on, folks? I'll tell you what's going on. We're being sold down the river. We've got to do something about it, otherwise we will not see this country go on as the United States. And I don't think we'll see it go on for a year. I'm saying I don't, I don't believe I will see it go on as a country in six months at present. Because if the federal government has created the World Trade Center bombing and the bombing in Oklahoma City, 
which is extremely tragic because it killed probably 40 or 50 children. And by the way, I have absolutely no use for a person that hates children. Our Attorney General Janet Reno hates children. She hates men, she hates everything but maybe her own kind. And by the way, if anything is outer space alien, it's her. <laughs> Well, Bill Clinton is just another big liar out there. But Janet Reno, I can't forgive her for what she's done. She's done more as an as as a singular intergovernmental official to destroy this country than any other individual uh, believes since the great traitor during the Revolutionary War. What was his name? Uh, oh, I'm trying to think. What? Benedict Arnold, there we go. Probably find out she's probably distant relation of some sort. Now, what can we tell our government, trusted government officials? I know how rare those are. They're an endangered species. Well, they can first start by make, getting a bill going that requires all government officials to register. I mean, if they're going to ask us to register their uh, our guns and our rights, they have to register their rights. They can register their rights and their guns and their legislative ability through one kind of referendum. Number one being they can limit the amount of years that they're in office. If they cannot do this, by the way, if a contract with America, by the way, is really a contract, and all the politicians, or the Republicans, or Democrats, or whatever you want to call them, to me that's just a label, they left one thing out of a contract. Say you uh, uh, buy a car, or buy a house, or buy something on time, and uh, it's got ten parts to the contract and one is scratched out after you've signed the contract. By the way, it's null and void. You don't owe anything. You may even be able to keep the property. By the way, the contract with America is not only illegal, but it's asking us to change the bargain. The only, only damn people, that only damn things that change the bargain are the damn outer space aliens etc., etc., and evil people. I think we can do better than this. Now, another thing we can do is require all politicians basically to accept no PAC money of any kind and accept no money from a salary and that all government officials be basically put on kind of like a selective service. Everybody has to serve in some part of a government structure to some degree. And it's a voluntary thing, and if you've done right, you get paid for it. And if you're not done right, then there are other ways to, to make sure that uh, that happens. You, you will be punished accordingly. We did these kind of things if we were prudent, if we thought everything out, if we, because I'll tell you, the only thing that doesn't need changing in any way, shape, or form are the two pieces of paper, one the Bill of Rights and one the United States Constitution. Those two thin sheets of paper have kept us from totalitarian slavery, or worse, for over 200 years. And now they're being seriously threatened by a minority few people who want to reign over us, who want to kill us off, who want to cause us great bodily harm. You realize, in my field, I couldn't even, if I saw something wrong, and I did many times, I, I had no way to blow a whistle. That's not what our founding fathers taught us. That's not what they laid down in sacred writing, almost sacred writing, I might want to add. We can do better. If we are really
really a government, if we are really the militia, then we have to stand up and we have to make ourselves known that this will not be tolerated in any way, shape, or form, and it must cease and desist. And if we are challenged, then so be it. Then we are challenged. And I guess the actions of us will be rather forthright by judging from this crown. I'm laying down my life by talking about secret things that I took an oath of secrecy that said that if I broke that oath of secrecy, I am guilty of espionage. I am called a traitor by my own government for blowing the whistle. That's not only a disgrace, but it's an outrage and has ramifications on everyone in this room. And I think we can do better. Now, I've talked about a number of topics that are rather controversial. I don't think I've talked about too much about why we're being enslaved. If you remember, there's always been a nice convenient war. If it wasn't World War I, it was World War II. If it wasn't World War II, it was Korea. If it wasn't Korea, it was Vietnam. So it's been a convenient war. When we've gotten a little bit too smart, folks, there's been a war to wipe out the good people that would take over and run our country effectively. And that it is time that world governments officially acknowledge there's, there's a lot of times, so and we're going to have to face some very serious consequences, very short. What we call patriot movements in this country are being singled out for war crimes against humanity, and I happen to think there are a few people in the, these groups that are crazy, but I would say they're an extreme minority. Probably less than one hundredth of one percent, or one ten thousandth of the whole. Janet Reno has us believing that all of the people that are in patriot groups are responsible for inflaming the populace for doing other crimes against humanity, like killing children, innocent children, regardless of race. The unspeakable thing that happened at Oklahoma City is a wake-up call. If we do nothing, if we decide to stuff our gut to say, well, I don't have to do anything today. I can watch uh, this show on TV or that show on TV. I don't have to talk about all that Bill Schneider or Al Bielik or some other person talk, Bo Greitz or some other person talk about it. Let them do it. If we act this way, folks, we're not going to be around very long. If you got rights out there, you might as well start enjoying them like you've never enjoyed them before because pretty soon we're not going to have them. We got the wonderful freedom of movement. Driving down the road, and you don't have to show your ID, but slowly that's changing. There's legislation right now in the United States Congress that any person that has worked for the federal government has to have special identification. It's illegal. It's an outrage. And I've already drawn the line, put, stamped and put my foot down, and I say, enough is enough. I've had enough. And I think we can do better. I know we can do better. So I'm asking you, out of this entire group, how many hundred people there are, 150 or so? Five of us. Five small people gather together and start preaching the good things about America to whatever group size it is, as long as it's more than yourself. Try a group of, say, 10 or 15. I think most of us have 10 or 15 people we know, friends, whatnot. If 10 people did it in this room, we'd reach double that figure. We'd reach 20 million or more countrywide. What do we have to do? We have to stockpile weapons and all these other kinds of things. Trouble is with revolutions, they always end up killing the wrong people. 
unfortunately, it, uh, it's starting to look like that might have to be the only scenario to get these parasites off our back. And I'm telling you folks, they are parasites of the first water. They're only out for their own self gain. And by they, I'm talking about your government officials. Not all of them. There are some that are good. There are some that are honest. There are some that are forthright, that love God, that love the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and other wonderful works by our founding fathers. But they're few and far between in the House of Representatives of the United States Senate. There is not one politician that is not an attorney. There is something wrong there, folks. During Abraham Lincoln's time, I know that's a long time ago, 130 years ago, roughly, it was an honor beyond medals and glory to serve in the United States Senate or in the House of Representatives. And there was actually only about eight total senators and House of Representatives people that were attorneys. The rest of them were common folk like you and like me. But we've been let down the wrong path, folks. If we sit here and do nothing, we're not going to have any freedom. And it's not going to take very long. At this rate of speed and the way things are going, what's going to be the next scenario? Is it going to be another bombing somewhere? First it was a trade center bombing in New York City. Then it was middle, homegrown America killing children and innocent people on their way to work. Whatnot. Elderly people in Social Security office and whatnot. How come the AARP isn't talking about the 61 older people that bit the dust in the Social Security office and the other federal government that was seeking. Some of them were in the Internal Revenue Service and other kinds of... By the way, that's another thing. The IRS, there's nothing legal about the IRS at all. By the way, do you realize I was reading the Oregonian newspaper 10 days ago. President Clinton has authorized the U.S. Mint to print the new money. They've already printed about three billion dollars of it. You travel overseas, you get this pink looking thing with a picture of a president on it and a similar thing that the insignia is a little off center. Done that way. On either side of this bill is a UPC stripe. No, sir. I don't believe in having the mark in my hand or in my forehead like the Bible taught me. But it's coming, folks, if we do nothing. It's coming as sure as I'm standing here telling, telling it to you. And it's probably going to be here in less than two years if we do nothing. And this is an... I'm actually downplaying it. It could be a lot sooner. <laughs> federal government right now with their high tech has invented an earthquake device. I have reason to believe that the earthquake in Kobe, Japan, by the way I'm a geologist, I know exactly what I'm talking about. There was no pulse in the pulse wave. There's supposed to be a pulse wave in any earthquake. There was none in the Kobe, Japan earthquake. None. In 1989, in and around uh, San Francisco, there was an earthquake. There was no pulse or pulse wave. That is a Tesla device. Nikola Tesla invented it, and he did it not out of evil, but he was trying to make a device that could be accurately used to, for construction and building of buildings and that kind of thing. It's been taken for evil, though. Guaranteed. I want you to know that the black budget programs throughout these United States have subverted science as we know it. What's AIDS, for instance? I'll tell you what AIDS is. 
AIDS was invented by the National Ordnance Laboratory in Chicago, Illinois in 1972. It was a biological weapon to use against the people of these United States. The reason I know this, I have seen the documentation by the Office of Strategic Services, which by the way is still in operation to this day, through the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta, Georgia. They used the glandular excre excretions of animals as well as humans as well as outer space aliens. I'll tell you something about these outer space aliens. They're mortal. They can be shot dead just like you and I can, but I'll tell you one thing. They're bad news in the worst order. We have absolutely no defense against their germs. None. They're a biological weapon of terrible consequence. I advocate that every alien on this planet, good or bad, if they're good they have, or bad, they have to be isolated. They are a biological weapon. Saddam Hussein and other people have killed three and a half million Kurdish people with a similar biological weapon. Do we, the people of this planet, deserve this? No, we don't. But we're not doing anything about it. And every, every moment that we waste, every moment that we don't blurt out and we say we've had enough, that we deserve better, that we're going to get better, we're doing other people on this planet in different countries a great disservice. Right now I'm dying of cancer related to work that I did for the federal government. I might live six months, I might not. I don't know. I'll tell you one thing. If I keep speaking out the way I am, maybe God will give me the life talk my head off. I will break every law that it takes to talk my head off. I love my country and its people more than my life. Eleven of my best friends in the last 22 years have been murdered. Eight of them called suicide. I finally got wind of one of them Portland Police is now involved in one of them. Not going to mention names before a grand jury, including the medical examiner's office. Murder by suicide, I call. My friend Ronald Lee Rummel is an Air Force officer. is a Silver Star winner. Is a patriot. Murdered because. He started speaking out about unidentified flying objects while being still employed as a member of the United States Air Force. How was he murdered? He was drugged. His jaw was broken open. A cheap pistol with filed off numbers called a Jennings J-22 was shoved in his hand. Somebody pulled the trigger because they found a piece of a fingerprint or a inside of a palm print on the weapon. I also found hair samples, somebody actively, somebody quickly putting the bullets into the, into the clip. That man saved my life. That man had a family of five children. That man was a great person. There's a good chance that when I fly back to Reno, excuse me, to Vegas, I have to drive home. I left my car down in Vegas. I have to drive home alone. I'm scared to hell. Before I went to talk in Las Vegas, Nevada, I drove a friend of mine, a disabled friend of mine, down to uh, Joshua Tree. And 29 Palms is next to Joshua Tree, and I went to see a, a dying uh, veteran 
disabled veteran friend of mine also, kind of an acquaintance friend, I don't see him very often, can hardly talk, he's got throat cancer, from working with atomic weapons. The federal government didn't want to pay for it, so he married a nurse whose father has uh, donated enough money to keep him alive for a little longer. Well, after seeing these two people, I drove up over the mountains, I had to drive over, around the mountains and up, up into them to get to Needles, California. It was followed by two government vans E-350 vans with G-14 plates, each with a couple of occupants apiece. One had an Uzi ready, and he was loading it, because I could see it through one of the windows. They, they zoomed by. I knew exactly what they were. I've already spoken out. I've spoken in 19 talks to present. I've probably reached 45,000 people. Well, they sped up around me, I sped up around them, took a bunch of pictures with a high-speed camera. And then they caught up to me, and it looked like they were trying to force me off the road. I have a Ford Taurus sedan. But what they don't know about that Ford Taurus sedan, it's got a police interceptor motor, it's got an 8-liter motor. It'll do 140 in the shade. Um, so I got up above them and I come to a screeching halt right in the middle of the And that it is time that world governments officially acknowledge the car and maybe a foot on either side. There was a deep ravine on to the left. There was a shallow ravine about nine or ten, I guess, roughly nine feet deep, ten feet deep, something like that, on the other side. One skidded over, rolled over in the right ditch. One went over to the left ditch and it rolled all the way down. I could hear a bunch of cries for help and crackling and glass and finally I didn't hear anything. Is this what it's going to take? Two weeks ago I had a man come to my Wilsonville apartment going to arrest me. By the way, I have a Rylite 38 clearance. I don't know if you know what that means. I only report to three individuals with that clearance. President of the United States, head of the CIA, and or a base commander. No one else. This man came to arrest me. He called the sheriff. said, I can't open the door to you. I'll open the door or we'll, we'll beat it in. I said, if you beat it in, you're at risk of your life. Are you threatening me? Yes, sir, I'm threatening you. I'm going to call the sheriff right now and have you removed. You're threatening my life. Call the sheriff. He, sheriff came, Clackamas County Sheriff car came, pulled right behind him. I know this man very well. I would trust him with my life after what he did. He risked his job. He risked a 22 career, 22 year career with the police department. He went right behind this guy, prevented him from getting out. He threw a bullhorn. He says, you are under arrest. Please come with me. I'll escort you out. He was escorted out in handcuffs to his disgrace. Sheriffs have a lot of power in this country. They can arrest FBI, CIA, DIA, and the like. It's a very good thing. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here talking to you. Now, I want to end this talk by mentioning we all know what the Patriot Movement stands for. Every one of us loves America. Most of us love America more than our life. Most of us are willing to defend it as we have defended it before. And we'll defend it again and again and again for how many times it takes until we get the objective done. <coughs> I would like to believe I'm a patriot. I'm no longer employed by the federal government. I took a pair of scissors and cut up my security card, 
and I mailed it back to the SOBs, part my French. I wrote a detailed letter and said, my life is threatened in any way, shape, or form. I did this. It's already been threatened. I will consider downloading 140,000 pages of information sensitive to the New World Order Strategic Defense Initiative and what it really stands for and the federal government structure as a whole. I've already begun to do this through the infonet and the internet worldwide. I spent $78,000 getting these kind of pictures away from the federal government after my father willed them to me in his will. They're all they are, a piece of paper with a few revealing notes on them. Stanley, Val Thoris is this particular character right here. Right here. He hasn't changed a bit in 58 years thereabouts. I have over 7,000 pictures. I have detailed files and writings. I have alien artifacts and metals. You're only looking at uh, half a dozen of maybe uh, 7,000 that I have. I feel you people have to know the truth as best as I could tell. Thank you very much. By the way, I might want to mention, if you want to look at these artifacts, try not to handle them, just look at them. And, uh, yes, thank you. Right. I'll be glad to. Uh, sorry, uh, women folk, uh, this is kind of gory. form a ray weapon that had a high dose of stinking radiation called cobalt or dirty bomb radiation. I remember the color of the beam was a light green, kind of like a light emerald green. Question? Do you know much about the reverse phase wave? No, I do not. Question? Yes, and I can tell you that there are 50 of them. There's one in every state. Can you, can you describe what their purpose is? Purposes, uh, they are prison camps. will make Nazi Germany look like a kid's toy. They're very large. As big as they are above ground, they are a minimum of three levels below ground. Have you ever heard of Goose Lake, for instance? Goose Lake is a prison. It's a supposed model prison run by Wackenhut. Wacken Hut is Fourth Reich Nazi German. They run this entire police state operation in Southern California. It is a low yield, deep underground military base. It's not military. Uh, Wacken Hut base, basically. It's buried about 500 feet underground. It is a long runway underground. It's about three miles long. It's got 2,700 prison cells in it. There's a track on either side of it. Food and, uh, and shower facilities are all on, they're kind of like individual cars on tracks and they service each prisoner. You get a change of clothes once a week, you get a shower once a week, no television, no nothing, totally underground, minimum lighting facilities. If you talk, you are beaten senseless. 2,700 federal prisoners are in it right now. The worst of the worst. 
I don't know about you folks, I learned an old, old song in church. The vilest defender who truly believes a pardon in Jesus is quickly received. I don't believe we have, we or anybody else in these United States has the right to torture anybody. I don't care if they're a murderer, a rapist, or anything else. We should basically get rid of these kind of individuals. But if we do have the guts and maybe a little bit of fortitude to kind of hope that, well, I don't want murder on my hands, and we imprison them, I don't believe this is the way. Question. A comment. It, it appears that we're way past the two-year voting cycle to stop what's happening. Right? Now we Well, like I said before, start forming cells, enclaves, I hate to say this, enclave has a peculiar nasty overtone to it. But start forming enclaves, start talking to people, talk your head off. Talk your head off because your life depends on it. I'm not asking you to do what I'm doing. I'm asking you to risk your life for these United States like I am doing. Question over here. Yes, I'll give you my address. and all the other tests that took place, we basically opened up a hole in time. And the reason I know this is Al Bailey told me, if you look in an early 1953 Life magazine, you'll find a picture of an A-bomb, and it, it, there's a round mushroom cloud, and through the mushroom cloud you can see black space with stars. Unfortunately, those stars don't add up to any known stars in our, in our view. And so Al Bielek was telling me, yeah, that opened up another dimension out, uh, and Life Magazine almost lost its license to print. Uh, but yeah, you're right there. Uh, your other questions, uh, some of which I can and cannot answer. Uh, right now, as much information as I have, I like to say I'm a scientist, but I think that's got a kind of a bad connotation anymore. But anyway, as a scientist, I like to say that in all my studies, I have every reason to believe outer space aliens are another form, another tool, another system of technology to enslave the wonderful people of the United States of America and the world under a one world government. And this scenario occurred in Nazi Germany and is now occurring in the United States and it's got to go. Otherwise, we're going to go. Next question over here. Now what's the reason for the base? The pretty, pretty obviously. If you take all the 129 dumb bases, right now there's actually 131 of them. Take 129 or 131 dumb bases, 10% of them, roughly 14 of them, the largest. They're all cities underground. There's high speed railways, magneto leviton trains that have obtained Mach 2, and Al Bielik will tell you about this in his talk. He's uh, seen them, actually been on one of them. I've seen the tunnels, I've never been on the train. Um, he'll tell you that also that these can house great numbers of people. Well, I'll tell you exactly how many numbers of people. You've got a 106 million man standing army, fully equipped with all the food, water, and provisions for two years underground, or however long it took to suffer out a nuclear war or whatever kind of ugly scenario, and that would be enough to defeat anybody in the United States. By the way, there's no place to hide anymore. 
black helicopters, and there are so many of them, not just black ones, I'm talking about military helicopters in general too. Uh, they have detection devices. If you've got something buried like a cache of weapons or diamonds or gold or money or whatever underground, they've seen it already, guaranteed. They can detect you in an airport. I don't want to blow this one by you too because this is a nice little tip. In it. Right now, if you're carrying more than $1,000 in your pocket, most of us don't, and some of us do, carrying $1,000 or more in your pocket, you are perceived as being an enemy of the United States and, and or a drug dealer, and you can be arrested immediately in any airport in the United States of America. By the way, if you look at your money, your 50, 100, 20s, 10s, 5s, whatnot, and even the 1s now, you'll find there's a little thread in there. If you look at it, like on a $100 bill, it'll say 100, and it'll have a, a little number in the 100, 100, 100, and $100 marks all the way on both sides. It's a little, um, kind of like a little thing that tells you that the beast is still there. We don't do anything about it, folks. The beast is going to claim us. Three ones. Okay. Question? Any more? Okay. Okay. The underground prisoners right now they're using the worst of the federal prisoners and the worst of and that it is time that world governments officially acknowledge that's correct and uh, that's pretty obvious you add up all the you add up 143 per car multiplied by 107,200 multiplied by 11 general contractors each with a similar contract and you're going to come up with a figure that exceeds 15 million 15 million is the number of patriots in America, number of concerned people in America, and also a number of people that could cause the federal government harm in America today, today, right now. I'm saying our federal government blew up Oklahoma without question. Clearly proven. First of all, what did it? If you look in the pictures of the explosion, you'll find there is a large block taken out near the elevator shaft, and there's a smaller explosion. By the way, a nitrate explosive has a maximum capacity of 20 thou excuse me of 20 kips worth of pressure per square inch. A kip, a kip is kilotons of pressure, thousand tons. So 20,000 tons of pressure per square inch maximum. If you have the whole truck totally packed, well, by the way, the federal building in Oklahoma City was had some pretty strong girders in it, girders and pillars and stuff like that. Uh, the average federal building, especially a new one like this one, has a tensile strength of 200,000 kips. The only thing to tear it apart like that is either a nuclear weapon. Or a thermite charge, shape charge explosive. Right now, the only thermite charge explosives in these United States are military operated and they're housed at Mather Air Force Base in California, near Sacramento. Yes? There were two still, I wasn't really aware of that, but if there were two explosions, I would assume that one was either a reverberate explosion or it was an atmospheric explosion. It's on the uh, South Grant University. It wasn't an echo. I'd have to look at it. It's on the back of the machine. I just had it. Really? Yeah. Right there. Okay. And this is the second explosion. Is that correct? Right. They're both on there. Right together. Mm -hmm. Well, the truck bomb shows an explosion uh, once again with no P wave, but it has a scalar wave to it. Could have been a scalar weapon. 
electromagnetic weapon of some sort. The train explosion, once again, also has a, it does have a P wave, but doesn't have an N wave. Therefore, it too must be a device. Oh, it is. Okay. All right. I heard the director being interviewed, and he said the same thing. There were two explosions, and uh, they asked him if it could have been inside. And he said, well, this one here that says truck bomb. No, that's not the bomb. That's a truck. No, this. Okay. It says oh, truck and bomb. I see. Okay. Uh, the one that's the two that are marked bomb. Once again, have the configuration, it's called the squared sine wave configuration, or crazy Ivan as the Navy calls it. Uh, squared sine wave with no P wave, it would have to be a mechanical device, without question. I could, I could prove that, but it uh, would be kind of boring laying the figures out. Okay, another question? Yes, yes ma'am. How do you respond to Christians who are apathetic about saying it's all uh, outside of the Bible anyway, um, the new world order, the mark of the beast, and, you know, uh, I want Jesus to come anyway, so, you know, why fight it? Well, how do you respond to that? Prudence. What you know best to be. Pray about it. Prayer. That's the only prudence around the word saving. Yes. Okay. Is this true that you know that you're thinking about what's done It's a quite a possibility because uh, for instance, uh, the New World Order and the elite, as you call it, um, built and funded Hubble Telescope. We remember also that telescope, the, the one that orbited Mars, supposedly shut down. That was another lie, total lie. Took detailed photographs, totally mapped the planet. I've seen some of the photographs. Uh, the face on Mars is a reality. There, at one time, there was a civilization. Um, that's been proven. Computer uh, enhancement photograph, and it was broken down by a supercomputer and proved it to be an uh, intelligent made device rather than a hunk of rock with a funny shadow on it that NASA told us another lie. Once again, you have to remember it. These people cannot tell the truth. In days past, they were called the sons of Belial, the ones that could not tell the truth. We have to consider them our enemy. Next, just follow. Yes, they do have bases on Mars. Have you heard of uh, the possibly these grades are uh, part of the, the experiments which our government are doing under base of taking the synthetic and all these creatures that perhaps they're manufacturing? No, sir. I can, pr I can tell you right now that's not so. They have a copper oxide for a blood similar to an octopus, a cephalopod, or an insect, or a spider. Another thing is they're... Uh, chromosomal structure is totally different. Their cellular structure is totally different. No, sir, that's not true at all. Are any good uh, feelings up there? Uh, some people think that perhaps... Probably so. There's supposedly a group from, uh, that I've heard uh, from different sources, fairly accurate sources of that, that some of them came from the Pleiades, but right now they're supposedly having an all-out war with the Greys. And uh, they had to leave us, and uh, they left us anywhere from a couple of years ago to four years ago. I, I haven't really studied that yet, and I've been uh, talking about other things lately. So. Some people think they're here to rescue us, and that whole thing blows up. Don't count on it. <laughs> Question? Can you give out your internet address? No, sir, I cannot do that. You'll have to go through the internet and do it yourself. That would be giving myself away to the beast, and I can't do that. Question. Is 
study called anthropology. Uh, end time phenomena. Prophesied by Daniel, prophesied by Isaiah, subject to the Olivet Discourse, and the subject of the book of Revelation. It does talk about kind of things that are going to come to judgment on the earth for Israel and the Antichrist and those who are believers. It's impossible. These things will probably come to truth, come to pass. But to use eschatology as a weapon of fear in order to get the people to act is not what the truth is talk about. That's correct, that's correct. You can't you do it that way. The fact of the matter is that in Christ we have liberty from those kinds of things which are going to befall the earth because there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So it says, but to try to say that we are people who are subject to condemnation is not a full understanding of that power. I would agree with your statement. There is one thing, though. I love America. I'm only one person. I'm only human. I can make mistakes. I'm not perfect. God is perfect, as much as I know. I will say one thing, though. Keep reading the Bible, and it'll just make your heart pure and good. It'll also improve your prudence, and improve your state of mind overall. Would it be more possible to get further into Christ and get further into ourselves? And let the world and all all the good people in this country go to waste? No, sir, I cannot believe that, nor will I possibly ascribe to that in any way, shape, or form. Christ did not put us on this earth to die in a holocaust of fear from characteristic evil entities or people. No, sir, I cannot believe with that particular statement. I love Christ, but unfortunately I cannot believe that I can allow my fellow countrymen to go by the wayside. And I think actually it's a form of disinformation and government propaganda to believe it. Next. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. The Idaho Constitution has a provision for the militia, all able-bodied men between 60 18 and 45 years old will serve in the militia. That's in the Idaho Constitution. Okay, I agree with it. In fact, I would extend it from the years of 18 years old to maybe your age, 70 or 75. I'm willing to do it. I'm up past the age of 45. Sorry, I don't believe in age limits. If I live to be 100, I'd like to do it. Yes, sir. I'd like to give you a quotation from the Bible, Christ is talking. It is Luke 19, 27, and it says, Bring those my people who do not want me to rule over them before me and slay them. And I always ask the people, does that mean love them to death? But the preachers don't preach this. And there's other quotations like that. Yes, sir. I've read such quotations. If I'm wrong, I will stand slain by God. <coughs> stand convicted. Maybe I have already been convicted. Yes, sir. Can you tell us where the prison is in Idaho? Yeah. Near Kirtalene. What was that question? Would you uh, state the question again? Where is the uh, federal prison that you're talking about in Idaho? Well, there's several federal prisons. There's a new one being built near Kirtalene, Idaho. I don't know, I've never been out there, but I heard it's on the east side of the town of Kirtalene, Idaho. Whatever. Man with a red shirt way in the back here. I don't, and I haven't heard about such things, but I'm sure there might be such things. There are things that were used against uh, the Afghan people. There were things that looked like innocuous toys, and there were high explosives that killed a lot of people.
you can bet your bottom dollar that this is some form of a setup of American people's rights without question. Yes, I believe that too. The U.S. Navy presently spends about one sixteenth of the entire black budget allocated to them on psychological programming techniques through the RAND Corporation. Next question. This lady. Okay. I can only take one more question, so this lady. I personally don't know the name of the person who did it, but... Uh, oh, well, this is a difficult task, ma'am. Uh, the best thing that can be done, yes, I would say yes, that is true. We can get the word out. Uh, but it's better to get in groups of people and tell your friends the best that you know how to say and go from there. But other than that, yes, that uh, that would be the best thing. Right. Well, unfortunately, I'd like to say, yeah, go ahead, write, write everybody until uh, the cows come home. But right now, as the way things are going, that's not, that's might not be your best bet. You might